In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and in earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbour, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture, and thus explore this gentleness of his, and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, since he will be looked after. We have his word for it, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you're prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. The word of the Lord. Please stand and claim the gospel. of the world, says the Lord, anyone who follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him, and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. On pilgrimage to Poland several years ago, I had the opportunity to visit Auschwitz and Birkenau concentration camps a very silent, sobering, harrowing experience indeed. During the last war, as soon as children arrived by train at Auschwitz, 
together with the elderly and the sick. They were immediately selected for the gas chamber. On one occasion, a group of children were left to wait by themselves for the next day. A man, we'll call him James, asked the guards if he could stay with the children during their last night on this earth. And surprisingly, his request was granted. So how did they spend their last night? Well, he started off by telling the children stories in an effort to cheer them up. But instead of cheering them up, he succeeded only in making them cry. So what did they do then? Well, they all cried together until daybreak. Then James accompanied the little ones to the gas chamber. Afterwards, he returned to the prison yard to report for work. And when the guards saw him, they burst out laughing. That true story has most of the ingredients of our readings this evening. In it, we see the brazenness of evildoers, the persecution of the innocent, and the apparent triumph of evil, which is the subject of this evening's first reading. It also has a marvellous example of service done to the little ones something which Jesus Christ valued so highly and which is highlighted in this evening's gospel. That man, James's heroic act of service towards those little ones shines out all the brighter because of the darkness of the background. In Auschwitz, all that was good and decent and noble was trampled into the ground. In Auschwitz, self-interest was the name of the game. Compassion was as rare as a flower in the winter. Yet this man, James, rose above all that. He risked his life to befriend the little ones. He had no answers to give them, no salvation to offer them. All he could do was accompany them, be with them during their last hours, so that they would not suffer alone. He is a Christ-like figure. He would not participate in evil. Neither would he stand idly by and watch others suffer without at least trying to ease their sufferings. Even though James was just an ordinary prisoner with no rank or status of any kind, he was undoubtedly the greatest person in that saddest, most awful of places on that saddest of occasions. And what made him great was his goodness, his goodness to the little ones. Jesus Christ was the supremely just one Yet he also suffered. Throughout his public ministry, he was hounded by his enemies. This was so because he was too good, too just for them to contemplate. 
Jesus Christ was victorious, not by avoiding evil, but by confronting it and overcoming it. He gives courage and hope to all those who sacrifice themselves for others in the cause of right. Persecution has always been the lot of the righteous. However, it gives them an opportunity to show their true metal. And along with that, they just also know that God is on their side. God never abandons the upright, but their reward is in the life to come. On the third day, he will rise again. The resurrection assures the ultimate triumph of good over evil, of life over death. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conscious of our many needs and aware of our limited human resources, we now turn to God in prayer. We pray that we may all be intentional disciples, eager to ensure that our worship and practice of our Catholic faith may always come from the heart. Lord, hear us. We pray that we may be generous people, Generous with our time, generous with our gifts and talents, generous with the time we give to daily prayer. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are poorly in mind or body, and we ask God to bring healing where there is pain, to bring comfort where there is anxiety, and to bring hope where there is despair. Lord, hear us. We remember in our prayers this evening all those who care for a sick or aged family member at home, that they may be given all the necessary strength and graces to continue to be Christ-like in this often unseen and unapplauded act of love. Lord, hear us. For those families, especially those families in our own parish who are mourning the loss of a loved one, we pray that they may find comfort in their sadness, certainty in their doubt, and courage in their loneliness. Lord, hear us. And for all those 
who are suffering the consequences of the current coronavirus pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Lord, hear us. We pray also in thanksgiving for all our benefactors, for those whose kindness and generosity make a huge contribution to our well-being. We pray that they will be hugely rewarded for their goodness. Lord, hear us. We remember this evening the often forgotten souls in purgatory, and we pray that they may soon see the face of God. Lord, hear us. For all who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, we remember in a special way this evening Brian Jordan, whose first anniversary occurs today, Sarah McConnell, Eileen Sloan, Maureen O'Neill, Berta Jimenez, Joaquim Martins da Costa, Manuel Guterres Correa, Paulino Gama, Jerry Halfany, Margaret Lester Falloon, Maria da Costa, Olga da Costa Pinto, and Eddie Creaney, all of whose anniversaries occur today. We pray also for Brother Francis, Margaret Murphy, Connor Hughes, and Barney Hugh Murphy, whose anniversaries also occur this weekend. And we keep in our prayers those who have died of recent weeks, commending to God's mercy Anne Moore and Veronica McCann. And our prayers are also requested this evening for the happy repose of the soul of Stella Harbinson, late of Silchen Grove, who died yesterday and whose funeral mass will be celebrated here in St. John the Baptist Church at 10 o'clock mass on Monday morning, with Stella's uh, requiem mass being restricted to 130 people on account of the current ongoing pandemic. We ask God to welcome these deceased and all our own deceased loved ones into that eternal home he has prepared for them. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, may everything we do begin with your inspiration, continue with your help, and reach perfection under your guidance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. a few items to flag up in this weekend's bulletin. Firstly, I'd like to express thanks to all those who contributed to last weekend's offertory collection, which amounted to £1,569.68, with a standing order for the month, standing at £887. But also to mention that next weekend, the 25th, 26th of September, will also be the priest's use collection with a pink envelope. And thank you to all those parishioners for your continuing support. Parishioners may leave their weekly offerings in the boxes located at the entrance and exit of both parish churches. Or, if parishioners choose to do so, they may also leave their weekly offerings in the parish office letterbox or through the letterbox of either parochial house. This church St John the Baptist would be closed this Thursday afternoon from quarter past one till a quarter past three due to St John the Baptist College celebrating the start of the new school year with Mass. And then the church will reopen once that St John the Baptist College Mass has concluded. There will be no confessions in St Patrick's next Saturday due to a wedding. There will be evening confessions here in St. John the Baptist as normal. 
and also just to flag up this item about First Holy Communion and Confirmation. Children who attend one of the two parish primary schools or Ballywarren Primary School are prepared for First Holy Communion and Confirmation in their respective primary schools. If your child does not attend one of these schools but wishes to receive the sacrament of First Holy Communion or Confirmation and importantly is resident in our parish, they will need to be registered for a course of preparation for both of these sacraments. Registration can be made in the sacristy here after any Mass and parents will need to bring along your child's original long birth certificate and baptism certificate. A course will then be organised and will usually take place one night a week in the pastoral centre. The opening date for the registration is the 19th of September and the closing date is the 10th of October. So if that happens to apply to anyone here this evening or to anyone you might happen to know, maybe be kind enough to inform them. I suppose the important thing is that the child has to be resident in this parish, the parish of Drum Creek. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ the Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop, Michael, his assistant Bishop, Sean, our retired Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, and for protection tonight. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits thee here, ever this night be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. I invite you to join me in praying the Memorare this evening. I was asked last week by a friend down in the Republic if I would uh, say the Memorare each night for the next nine nights for his little daughter and her classmates who are due to be confirmed uh, next week. So I have given him my word, so I'd ask you to join me. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly on to you, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your clemency, hear and answer me. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>